Okay, good day again. Okay, just a little update on the van. If anybody's interested. Yeah. Okay, yesterday I, and the day before, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up the uh, cross member for the gearbox. I've got, yeah, primed, painted, got it back in there, got the new mount on there. Um, this has got a uh, yeah, Supra 5 speed in it with a Delos bell housing. Um, I'm also running a uh, Land Cruiser master cylinder and slow cylinder. I did have a, a kit for a Holden, but I worked out that it was actually for a six cylinder. The kit they'd supplied and it just didn't have enough push for the V8. And yeah, it was an issue for a couple of years, and yeah, that was a solution. Was you know, yeah, to put yeah, you know, Land Cruiser Master and Slave on it. Originally, the reason I took the cable clutch off because I had a major car accident you know, back in '99, and I got this you know, VN. Um, actually, I got. I got a ute, all, all the running gear off this is off my HZ ute. The van shell came separate some years later, but yeah, I had a, a major injury to me knee, my left knee, and it's the cable clutch was just too hard to work. So that was the whole reason I went to the hydraulic to begin with. But yeah, anyway, getting back to. We we're at so I've got yeah the cross member in now new mount on the gearbox um, as I mentioned in a previous video I did just have the gearbox wired up and it broke while I was winding it over pumping the, the prime and the oil pump which uh, I then had bricks underneath it which meant that I couldn't move it. And I need to move it. I want to push it outside now and wet rub the firewall. And uh, just going to go with a matte black. Yeah, full full matte black engine bay. Um, this particular model did have, you know, the outside colour on the firewall. Given that this is a WB. But, yeah, I don't know how far earlier, but. I'm pretty certain the HQs, and I know all of the earlier models only had a matte black yeah, engine bay, so, yeah, and the, the red clashes with the, the red on the engine, the, the two reds look st stupid, so, yeah, so it's uh, going to go with the with the matte black, and I need to push it out and wet rub all that now, um, wasn't that great, uh, Paint work anyway. Got a few runs in it and whatever, and yeah, it'll be it'll be much easier to paint you now just with spray can. So yeah, be able to get around the engine, and uh, yeah, then I can start putting things like steering column more and harness brakes, all that sort of stuff back on. <coughs> <coughs> Having also looked at the red, and yeah, you know, this was a cheaper metallic red. Which wasn't real happy with it. Turns a few funny shades in different lights, and then uh, I thought, well, the only real metallic red or pearl red now, actually, they're not so much metallic, but is on the you know late model Mazdas and Mazda threes and CX fours and Mazda twos and all that. But yeah, it's majorly expensive. Um, and you know, wife always wanted it done in black, gloss black. And you know, I totally agree. It it looked absolutely, you know, fantastic in, in gloss black, you know, with you know, as much chrome work as and everything as I can get on it. But I've always been sort of afraid to do that, afraid of like my own ability to get it straight enough, you know. Gloss black will show up any every little defect, you know. If 
you're going to paint a vehicle gloss black, it's got to be, you know, pretty close to perfect or it's going to, it's going to look shit. But anyway, I've decided there to bite the bullet and go with the black. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with the gloss black now. And uh, there is advantages to doing that too. It's a whole lot cheaper. Um, and there's no issues with matching the paint up. Like once you start getting into pearls and metallics, you basically really need to paint the whole car in one go. Yeah, you know, because you, you only have to have a little bit of variation, like a variation in the air pressure, a variation in the mixture of the paints, etc. And you can get different shades of it. It can it can turn out like totally different if you've sprayed like one area and then sprayed another area later, it's there's a good chance that it won't match up. So yeah, you know, which is why, you know, when paint, panel beaters and spray painters do repairs, you know, if they were to just do a door, they might just paint the door and they'll blend the whole side. But, uh, yeah, black shouldn't have that issue. So, um, therefore, you know, I, I could basically paint it you know, one panel at a time and not have any real issues and, uh, you know, there's a good chance too that I'll run out of paint several times because there's a real good possibility that I'll, you know, get it to where I think I'm, it's right and I'll put the gloss black on it and won't be happy with it and have to do it again. So, you know, parts of this car may end up being re-sprayed two or three times, you know, before I'm actually happy with it, so... But yeah, so that's the plan and uh, yeah, just thought I'd give you a little quick update on where we're up to. And, uh, yeah, still a little way off from firing it up. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go in today, I'm going to, um, going to get the speedy sleeve, that harmonic balancer. Those grooves running around it. And uh, so I'm just going to run a speedy sleeve on that and get that bolted in then. Uh, I'm also going to buy, I'm going to buy a, a five litre of hydrochloric acid and make up a bath. And uh, yeah, I'll do an, an acid bath on, on, on me uh, headers. I did have to... Um, as you can see, shiny bits on here. I did have to change part of it. This used to, um, I think it used to loop, go down or out or up. Down, I think, is where it used to went. Anyway, but this pipe had a funny big bend in it. And when I put the air conditioner unit on, because, you know, the van never had an air air conditioner and neither did the, the ute before it but yeah when I tried to fit the air conditioner on it wouldn't fit on it was hitting this pipe so yeah that piece has been cut out and replaced and uh, yeah of course you can't you can't put in the exhaust and I do want it to look you know a little bit decent so yeah I'll ground that back a little bit um, I will grind the underside but yeah I'm going to go along I've got a welder yeah, fill, a, fill it with world in a few places just to smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, there's a notch here, notch here, there's a notch around the back here. There's a notch there, so I'm going to have to, yeah, run weld across it so that I can smooth it out and make it look like it's never been cut. But, yeah, that's the, the next step for that, and then I'll ask the bathroom and, uh, yeah, I'm going to try... Try something I haven't tried before. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with exhaust paints. Not so much in them burning off like they do burn off over time, but the problem I have is that they go rusty again real quick. They don't seem to seal the metal. And, uh, yeah, I mentioned this in a, a previous video. 
I use this firebox when it's not burning. I use it as a bench and I've sprayed several things on it. And the red oxide you can see on there, that's been on there for six months. That's got a whole, had a whole winter of burning the fire and I get this fire roaring, you know, it gets cold in Tasmania and it hasn't burned at all. It's still there six months later, so yeah, I'm going to experiment now. I did it with the, the Briggs muffler. But yeah, when I get some black exhaust paint, well, I'm going to go with pot belly black actually rather than exhaust paint, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with my headers too, is uh, put the red oxide on first and then put the, the pot belly black over the top of that and hope that it lasts a little bit longer than yeah, regular exhaust paint. And, uh, yeah, and uh, got off track there for a minute, but yeah, so to get the engine going, I've got to get the headers on, obviously. I did find a, a rubber cap, but I, I'm not real confident on that, so I'm going to take the water pump off and tap a thread into it. This is a Chevy one, I think, um, which fits the Holden, but yeah, they've got two um, heater ports, and you only need one, so... Yeah, I'm going to take that back off and I'm going to tap a thread in there and put a bolt in it. Um, but yeah, I still need to buy, as I said, the sleeve. I need to buy a full set of spark plugs. Um, got to buy coolant. Buy some carby cleaner. Um, still got to top up the gearbox. Um, yeah, so there's a few things I've got to buy, so, you know, given it's almost Christmas, it's, yeah, I probably won't actually be firing it up till next year, but if I can do it earlier, I will, um, I'm hoping to, but, yeah, we'll see how the finances go. I'm sure there's something else I've got to buy, but, yeah, anyway, oh, yeah, i going to buy an air filter. I'd like to buy a whole new unit, but for the time being, we'll just buy a filter. I'll filter unit itself, but yeah, the actual air cleaner used to be chrome. It's rusted up, looks like crap now. So, yeah, going to buy a whole new unit in time. But for, yeah, for the time being, but yeah, you know, like it's only 25 dollars, but you know, 25 there, 30 there. 30 for that, you know, 50, you know, like, I'm probably still, you know, close to $200 away from starting it up, so, yeah, that's the hold up, I have other expenses, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm not a business of any kind, I'm a retired pensioner, and, uh, everything's always on a tight budget, anyway, We'll leave the ramble at that and uh, like, subscribe if you haven't done so and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.